Hi, welcome to Naptime Nutrition. This is Yafi Lavova, registered dietitian nutritionist with Baby Bloom Nutrition. And uh, today we're going to be talking about baby sign language. And you like this fun uh, crawler at the bottom here. I'll turn that up. Um, so baby sign language, did you use it? Why, why did you use it? How did it work for you? How old were your kids? Um, I can say that for me, the, the biggest selling point, and I'll start off with this, is that when my twins were young, they were probably around a year old. I was walking around with them and they were in their little wagon and they both started just screaming at the same time. And I don't know if any of you have kids, give me a, a little heart sign if you have twins. <laughs> um, but when they both start crying at the same time, it's like, I don't know, things just, things just kind of go crazy. So I looked at both of them and thought, what, what do you want? And both of them at the same time started doing this. Now, if you know anything about baby sign language, this is more. And we kind of messed up sign language in my house by not using the, the appropriate signs, or maybe I only used signs referring to food because, well, my life revolves around food. But in my family, more meant give me a snack. <laughs> and I'll get to that um, about how signs may be different in different families. But uh, it really, it really impacted their confidence and how and how I felt confident they were able to communicate with me long before they were physically able to use words vocally. So, so let's get into why we should use it. Well, early communication is the first point, and that's what I was displaying with that story. Early communication. They kids can't speak, they can't really express themselves until closer to two years old, sometimes even after that. And giving them sign language helps them to start communicating as early as eight months old. And they can understand you even a little bit before that. So it really helps to head off some tantrums when they're able to communicate their needs and they don't feel like they have to throw themselves on the floor and kick and scream in order to get you to understand what their needs are. So from six months on, you wanna start with some really basic signs. And towards the end of the broadcast, I'm gonna go over certain signs. Um, but that early communication leads to psychological benefits. They have increased confidence and self-esteem. And guess what? So do you. Being able to understand your child who's upset and can't otherwise communicate is such an, a confidence booster as a parent. And as we know, especially, I don't know how it is with fathers. I've never been a father. But uh, with moms, there's so much guilt. The mom guilt, everything we do is wrong. And this is just one way to really kind of feel like a rock star, just be able to communicate with your child. Uh, sign language aids in language and speech development and also reading. Kids who sign are going to read a little bit earlier and pick it up a little faster. And part of that might be because of the increased focus that, that they start using because of learning sign language. They have an increased vocabulary at two years old, according to one study, long-term cognitive benefits, which translates to a boost in IQ points on average 12 points. And I don't know how, how strong that study was, but I mean, <laughs> why not, right? So um, development of visual and attention skills. And that's what I was talking about earlier, where they have that increased focus when you're teaching them these signs and you're able to communicate back and forth and it boosts their confidence. That also results in, in visual and attention skills that are a little bit advanced for their age bonding as well. Not only the process of teaching your child those signs, sitting with them and helping them do the signs and helping them understand the signs, but um, just being able to communicate and be able to see the world through each other's eyes at that earlier age. And also increase of understanding emotion. Kids who are able to start processing their emotions by using sign language at an earlier age are going to be better prepared as they get older for dealing with those big emotions. So concerns, a lot of times when people think about doing sign language with their, with their child, the main concern that comes up is speech delay. If I give them sign language, they're never going to speak. Well, there isn't any research to back up that concern. My personal advice, not that I am a speech therapist, although we do have a speech therapist who's watching, um, my personal advice is to use basic signs and speak at the same time. Your child is going to learn quickly that it's much easier to speak than to sign when they get to the right age to actually developmentally express themselves more vocally. So it's really, um, it, it really does help them sometimes speak earlier, or sometimes they'll speak at the same rate as their peers, but they'll be able to communicate earlier given those signs. 
consistency. You have to be consistent with it. If you want them to learn it, then every time you give them water, you want to say water. And every time you go to sleep, you say time to sleep. And then they're going to start picking it up faster. If you forget one time or another, it's perfectly fine. They'll pick it up. They'll just pick it up a little bit slower with less consistency. Um, the time it takes, people are concerned that requires more focus and attention by the parent. And that sounds terrible. Why wouldn't you want to focus and be attentive to your child? But the truth is, parenting is constant focus and attention on your child. So it can be really intimidating to take on something that requires increased focus and increased attention. This doesn't require all that much um, above what you would normally be doing anyway. It's just being aware of the things you're doing and the basic signs you want to give and, and knowing what your goals are. Um, frustration. When the child knows sign language, they expect people to understand. And when they're communicating something and someone doesn't understand, that can be frustrating. A little more frustrating than if they're not used to someone understanding them. But to me, the, the risk far outweighs the benefits. You are often going to be in the company of people who do understand these basic signs. And it's really a much more popular way to raise children now. So you do get a lot of people who do understand these signs. If you have someone who is watching your child regularly, you may want to also teach them the signs so they know to look out for it. There is always going to be a situation where someone doesn't understand your child or you for that matter, um, childhood, adulthood, what have you. This is, this is something that happens throughout life. I don't believe that it's a reason to not give some sign language when they're younger. So how does this tie into nutrition? Well, you've probably heard me speak about division of responsibility, where it creates a happy, healthy atmosphere at the table where the child feels valued. When you're able to communicate with your child and they're able to communicate their needs to you, they feel more valued. They feel more honored. They feel respected. And it, it's we don't really subscribe to the to the be seen and not heard type of parenting anymore. Now we really want to know what our children want so that we can meet those needs in an appropriate and developmentally appropriate and socially appropriate way. So sign language is fantastic for that. Um, and while I advocate having a schedule, sometimes things can throw off your schedule. Sometimes if your child is teething, having a growth spurt, hitting a milestone, um, or even having a cold, their needs are going to be a little bit different. If you're nursing, a child who's teething may want to nurse more rather than having their solid food. And they may want to um, eat maybe 20 minutes earlier than usual. And it's okay to deviate from the schedule during these times. And you don't always know when a cold is about to hit or a milestone is about to be conquered. So giving your child the capability to communicate that with you is really a fantastic benefit to them. And that's really where we get into the nutrition aspect. A healthy relationship with food means that your child, as they grow, is not obsessing about food, is not obsessing about dieting or the number on the scale, that they're able to enjoy the food in front of them, whether it's salad or a pizza or a piece of cake at a birthday party. That's a healthy relationship with food. And when they know that their needs are being considered and met, they are more likely going to develop in the direction of a healthy relationship with food as they get older. And by using sign language, they're able to communicate with you. Maybe they're done a little bit faster, all done. Maybe they're done a little bit faster with their meal. Maybe they're hungry and they wanna eat. Maybe they want some water. Maybe they want more of something or they're, they're finished sooner. Maybe they're going to be tired and they wanna to go to sleep sooner. And these are all things that they're able to communicate with you when you give them the tools. And that's why it benefits, um, that's why it benefits their relationship with food and their nutrition. Um, it also reinforces how important their body signals are. We are born with the knowledge of that we're, we're hungry, we eat, we're thirsty, we drink. But with that knowledge, we have to rely on adults all around us in order to help us meet those needs. When the child can communicate those needs and see that those needs are respected and honored, they will respect and honor those body signals. And as they get older, it reinforces that knowledge that you should pay attention to what your body is telling you. And that's really a big key on developing a healthy relationship with food.
So here's some tips if you're doing baby sign language. And by the way, it's never too late to start. Even with five-year-olds, um, kids pick things up so quickly. Realistic expectations are very important. A child is not going to actually sign back to you before eight or nine months old, but you can start as early as six months and they start to recognize those signs. And when they can start communicating back to you, it's like, it just blows your mind. It's amazing when you see that communication come back at you. Keep signs simple. You don't have to give full American Sign Language. You don't have to give them the, the grammar and the specific sense of humor. You don't have to fully immerse yourself in deaf culture, um, although there's value to that as well. But you can just do um, more, eat, drink. This is drink and water, sleep. Um, oh, this is beer. My husband decided that one was important. Yeah. Um, use vocal words at the same time. You don't want to give a sign and not give the vocal word as well. And this is important because as they develop that ability to speak back to you, to respond to you vocally, they will start using those words as well. So it's important to do both at the same time. Help the baby make signs. If, if you're starting with a six month old or a nine month old or two year old for that matter, sit them on your lap with their back facing you and show them what you want them to see and, and show them the sign for it. Um, Daniel's supposed to be napping, so I can't use him as a, as a, a, a demonstrating visual aid, but um, he's kind of babbling. Anyway, um, if, you're, if you're doing water, for example, you put their, their sippy cup on the table and you say water, drink, and then they're going to pick it up. They're going to start doing this. Um, and you want to stay patient. You really want to stay patient. And here's another story from my experience with twins. People ask me all the time if they have a silent language, or is, sorry, if they have a twin language. They don't really have a twin language, but it did come out in sign language. They, they would look at each other and make some sign to me that didn't mean anything and expect me to respond. So that was kind of funny. One time they were sitting at their little table and they both start going like this and looking at me, waiting for something. I don't, I don't know what they're talking about. So that's something to look out for as well. Also, if you mess up, I alluded this, to this earlier, how I messed up, we only used more at the table. So every time they wanted a snack, instead of saying eat, they would say more. I don't even know the sign for eat. I probably should have looked that up. But um, so it's okay if you do that. You just want to you know, let other people know if, if they're involved with raising your kids, that, that that is now the sign for eating or whatever it is. It's fine. It's communication. So thank you for joining me on this nap time nutrition today. Let me know if you have used baby sign language and how it worked for you, how old your kids are and um, how many signs you used. Cause I think my kids know maybe four or five signs, but those were lifesavers. <laughs> they really were. Um, so I have exciting news about Toddler Test Kitchen. So if you are a part of Toddler Test Kitchen or you want to be, because of course, if you're local to the Phoenix area, you do want to be, sign up for my newsletter. I will drop the link in the comments section and I will keep you up to date. Um, and if this has been helpful, rate me on Facebook um, or Yelp or whatever everywhere. <laughs> So if I've helped you or you feel like someone else could use this type of help, uh, forward it to them, comment, and join me next time, Nap Time Nutrition, 1 p.m. Arizona time, which is 4 p.m. East Coast time, but I think we're changing the clock soon. We don't change the clocks here. The rest of you are crazy. Uh, so join me next week. You won't want to miss it. Thanks.